Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullman Adventure Club and today I'm going to be showing you how I installed a solar panel on my RV. This is a kit from GoPower, so it comes with pretty much everything you need. I believe it's a 180 watt solar panel, a good length of wire, uh, you've got the mounting hardware, the brackets, you've also got a PWM 30 amp charge controller, and um, pretty much everything that you need to get this guy installed. I'll try and put a link down below. This video is like five years old and I'm kind of repurposing it, but I'll try and find something on Amazon and put a link to it down below if you're interested in something like that. This isn't that hard of an install. I mean, I think most people can do this on their own if you're a little bit handy with some basic tools and a little bit of knowledge. So I wouldn't be too scared about attempting this yourself. You do have to connect this to the roof of your RV, which will involve some drilling and mounting, and you have to make sure that it's very secure when it's gonna be subjected to, you know, 70 mile per hour winds on the freeway. So, um, again, this is a five-year-old video and I kind of repurposed it, but I think it covers a lot of good stuff. And um, I'll, I'll do a voiceover and give you some tips along the way, but it's been going strong for five years and I really love it. So without further ado, I think we'll just jump out there Check out the video of the install and you can decide if this is something that you're willing to try on your own. I am not an electrician. I am not a solar installer. I'm just a DIY guy, um, but it has been holding up really well for five years. So this is just how I did it and it's for entertainment purposes only and maybe give you an idea of what's entailed in this process. So without further ado, let's jump into the install and see what's going on. Okay, so first we're gonna open up our panel from the packaging. We have our mounting hardware because this is a kit. And when you're opening up this cardboard, be careful not to damage it because we're gonna use that here in just a minute, a little tip for you. So once we open this guy up, you're gonna wanna attach all your mounting hardware. There are multiple holes for multiple positions. Um, they give you some anchors and bolts and other things, but as far as mounting the brackets, the bolt goes pointed up, and then you're gonna have a washer, a lock washer, and a nut. Make sure you tighten those down and orient the actual bracket itself so it's to the outside of the panel so that you can screw it down later. Do that all the way around in whatever orientation you're gonna be using for mounting it to the joists uh, on your roof. Now for your wires there, you might wanna go ahead and clip those and get them out of the way so when we put it up, we're good to go. Um, now for the cardboard, we're gonna cut off the access and tape this to the bottom of the panel. This is gonna cover the glass and prevent scratches, but also prevent the panel from producing power during our install. So that's a little tip for you. It's the perfect size for it. Once we're up on the roof here, I'm gonna go ahead and connect my brackets, uh, my wires, uh, just to make sure that I don't have to fish them out from underneath the panel later. Now, one thing that I'm gonna say as far as where to mount these on your roof is that it's very important that you find something very structurally sound. Now, if you have a brand new RV and it's got a nice big plywood decking up there, I mean, it's really firm, you can walk around on it, and it's solid. Um, you can probably just use the normal mounting hardware provided and put it anywhere you want because your wood's in really good shape and that'll definitely anchor it down. In my case, I have an older RV, which has kind of some water damage up there and like a softer roof. And so I wanna make sure that I go into my roof joists that go across the RV because those are definitely gonna be holding it in place securely as opposed to any soft spots that might've been water damaged. Um, also, if you have to pick and choose which brackets get a joist, make sure they're in the front of the panel that's gonna be getting the most wind resistance while you're driving down the road. Start there and then you can go back using different hardware if you have to, but it's up to you to make sure that this guy is secure. Your, your RV is gonna be different. You're gonna be putting it in different places. So that's just a tip for you. Make sure that it's very secure when you put it into place. So I've found my joists and I've marked all of my holes all the way around my panel. Now what you're gonna do after you've marked your holes is you're gonna pre-drill these with a little drill bit that's much smaller than the actual screw you're gonna be using um, so that it has plenty to grab onto. Now, most of us are gonna be using self-leveling lap sealant, and you wanna squeeze that down into that hole, and you wanna apply a generous amount. You really can't go wrong with this stuff. You wanna apply more as, a, as opposed to too little. And you're also gonna to wanna to have like the panel up out of the way, and maybe just uh, do all of your brackets at the same time, so you don't have to be constantly lifting it to put sealant under the next bracket. So you wanna try and do all these at the same time. And you can see that that's one of the little brackets they gave me and that's one of the screws. And for most of you, that's gonna work just fine. For me, with my RV being old and a little bit of water damage, I wanted to use like a lag screw. So that's what I chose to use. 
and um, making sure that it's not too long so it won't penetrate the inside uh, ceiling of the RV. And you can see that one's not even on. It jiggled a little bit. That's because my front ones are on a joist. That middle one is not. And um, you're going to want to just make sure you secure those and then just go nuts with the lap sealant all over the place because you don't want any leaks. And that's going to level out and make a little nice flat puddle and you're going to move on after you've secured all of those. Now for the wiring, I decided to run mine through my refrigerator vent because it's one less hole that I have to drill. And that happens to be where the cabinet is where most of my electronics and gauges and stuff are anyways above my refrigerator. You can uh, put, put a hole pretty much anywhere you want. Get a, a, this, I think this kit actually comes with a bracket and uh, you'll be good to go. Now I just moved a little bit of my bug screen here and threw my wire through. Looking back, um, I would definitely recommend some automotive PVC uh, plastic sleeve to protect that wire from any scratches or movement on the metal. Um, you can see mine go straight in for this video. I would recommend putting PVC plastic sleeve and putting some screen over that so bugs can't get in. Um, this, I did this like five years ago, so live and learn. So I ran my wires down. They come right over my refrigerator. And now what I'm going to use is some Eternabon tape. And that stuff really does not come off once it's on. So be very careful uh, when you decide to put all that on. But it's going to protect my wires from UV and things like that and just kind of keep it secure. That's what I decided to use. And it's worked out really well for about five years. So I would recommend it. I think it worked great in my application anyway. So once you have your wires nice and straightened out, I just kind of flatten that out. And that keeps them nice and neat and keeps the sun off of them and everything else. And the vent cover is going to cover that area and we'll be good to go. So once we get our wires kind of secured and you should really, you know, you can put your vent cover back on after you've put your protective sleeves and reattached your screen and all of that good stuff. Uh, make sure you re put your screws back on your, your refrigerator vent and we'll move on. Now this is the 30 amp PWM charge controller by GoPower that came with the kit and we're going to be mounting it right there, which is above my refrigerator. So you're going to line it up you're going to figure out where it goes. And basically, uh, it comes with a template, so you can use that template to actually make your cut wherever you wish. Um, for me, I'm just going to use a pencil and hold it in place and trace around it, make that hole a little bit bigger than the line because it does have a nice cover plate to cover any mistakes that you might make. So once I've cut out that hole, we're going to kind of run our wires, figure out exactly how much you need while leaving yourselves a little bit to play with. Don't cut yourself too short. Now you can see it's clearly marked here which wires go to the battery, which wires go to the solar panel, and etc. So we're going to go ahead and hook up the solar panel wires. And it does have a strip gauge on the box. So you can tell exactly how far to strip those, but they came pretty close um, from factory in this particular case. Um, so I went ahead and attached those. We're going to do our negative. And see that little gap right there? I should have really trimmed that and put that in further. And you want to make sure you look out for frayed wires as well. You also have an inline fuse, and that's going to go basically by um, your battery. This is where I'd recommend putting that guy in. That's to ensure that if you have a short, it's not going to fry that wire. Now, for the other length of wire, I ran it through that cabinet and down behind the refrigerator. And I was able to snag it and bring that down. And um, then I mounted my plate. And I've got my wires coming down. I drilled a hole that's going to go into my cabinet where my batteries are, which is actually next to the refrigerator too. So it all worked out pretty well. Once I pull those down through the cabinet, I was able to run those directly over to my battery bank and hook that up and you're good to go. But here's a little tip for you. If you happen to do it by your converter box, your converter box has two pretty heavy gauge wires that go to your battery bank for charging it. And it is possible to use those two wires that run all the way to your battery um, to hook up your solar panel into as well. It's not going to hurt a thing. Um, so if you have your two wires right there that actually charge your batteries, they go straight to your battery bank and you could splice in your solar to that and that's going to charge the batteries as well. It's not going to be affected by the converter box at all because when you think about it, if you ran your solar wires straight to the battery anyway, they're going to be connected to those two wires as well. So that's a little tip for you and you're pretty much ready to go. So there you go. Um, the only footage that I didn't have from that other video for some reason was connecting the wires to the battery itself. But I think we can all kind of figure that out. The red wire is your positive and you attach that to the inline fuse that they provided. And that attaches to the positive terminal of your battery. And the black wire attaches to the negative terminal of your battery. 
and poof, you're getting free energy from the sun and it's a very cool thing. Um, as far as that converter box wiring hack goes, that was five years ago when I recommended that. I still don't really see a problem with it because your solar wires come in and attach to the battery terminals and those converter charger wires come in and attach to the terminals. So it's all pretty much the same. I really don't see a problem with it, but if you do put a comment in the link down below, um, you would have to watch out for overloading those wires coming from the converter box to your battery bank if you have a lot of solar panels. This is just for one solar panel. It's putting out 8.8 .8 amps, it's not a big deal. So that'd work in my application, but that's not even how I hooked mine up. So I don't know, I'd be careful with that one, do your research. Um, also a little tip for you on where you put your solar panel, make sure that there are no shadows falling on it from your air conditioner, your TV antenna or a luggage rack because any shadow going onto those cells really diminishes the efficiency of the entire panel significantly. So try and put it out in the open if you can and I think you'll really enjoy it. They also have a different bracket kit where you can raise that on an angle to get some of the lower sun in winter. And that's a great thing to get a little more uh, juice for longer in the day out of your solar panel. I did not go that route because um, my roof is old. I'm a big guy. I don't want to be walking up there all the time to put it up and down before we travel. So I left mine flat. And I've been very happy with the performance of that 180 watt solar panel. It was my first one and I really, really enjoy it to this day. I'll try and put a link down in the description below for, for that kit because it really did make the installation process a snap. Um, I think that about wraps it up. If you have any questions or comments, I'll try and answer them in the comments below. Um, yeah, if this video helped you out, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. And until the next video, my name is Jim with Full Mode Adventure Club. Thank you so much for watching and happy camping.